Mike and Shannon, let's just take a look here at just how many people are in line getting ready to exercise their right to vote. Some voters even telling me they've waited in this line about two hours before they made it to the front of the line. Now, there are a couple things to take note of while you are heading out to the polls. You must go to your designated polling location. You must be wearing a mask and you are not allowed to take selfies with your ballot or inside any polling locations. You must wait to take that selfie till you get outside the polling location. And time is ticking away to vote with polling locations and mail and ballot clothes boxes closing at 7, although the polls will stay open later for those in line before that time. It's worth it. Nothing's going to change if you don't get out and vote. I almost didn't come vote this morning. I got up and said, you know what, I need to go out and vote because it matters. Now, while voting does end tonight, officials say that does not mean that we are going to have any of our final results. Officials say it could even take up to two weeks before we have those final ballots counted. Reporting live here in Rockford, I'm Brittany Carlin. Back to you in the studio, Mike and Shannon. Mike and Shannon, Rockford City Market is ending on a high note with dozens of vendors and community members enjoying the final days of some summer weather. Now, city market organizers say they never had a doubt in their mind about hosting this event, as they knew many businesses rely on it for customers. So an action plan was created, including mask wearing, social distancing, and limited numbers of vendors. Then as guidelines changed, the event adapted. And now 16 weeks later, Executive Director Kathy McDermott says she's happy to have something rewarding to look back on. You know, we're really grateful that uh, despite our challenges this year, we've had a good, good group of solid vendors who have come out every week and we've been able to offer these local goods and, and um, you know, produce to the community, even amidst the pandemic and some challenging times. Now, October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, so City Market paired with some area groups to pass out these stickers to honor the cause. Reporting live here at City Market, I'm Brittany Carlin. Back to you in the studio, Mike and Shannon. Mike and Shannon, the Finance Committee is going to review a recommendation from city staff to rebate 50% of this year's liquor license fees for businesses. Now, the city is estimating that bars and restaurants, which have only been able to provide minimal services, have lost about $240,000 in revenue during the pandemic. Now, a liquor license can run up to $1,500 for clubs and nearly $3,000 for bars, which means businesses would save somewhere between eight and fifteen hundred dollars. I think it's uh, uh, you know it also shows that the city of Rockford I think is, uh, is is we're very concerned about losing any more businesses especially restaurants um, and establishments uh, that have been here. Now this rebate is only for businesses that are in good standing with the city and since this is a business assistance program, no funding will come from the state or federal government. Reporting live here at City Hall, I'm Brittany Carlin. Back to you guys in the studio, Mike and Shannon. It's definitely a little chilly. It's just crazy to think that just last week all I needed was like a light jacket and now we are here today needing gloves, a hat and even some winter boots. We work really hard uh, to raise the best product we can. These free range turkeys are specifically raised for your dinner table. Robert Kaufman runs his family turkey farm in Waterman, just about an hour southeast of Rockford, and says these next weeks will be intense. We're really, really busy now. We're working, you know. 12, 16 hours a day. Kaufman gets the turkeys right after they hatch, and within 16 weeks, they're fully grown and ready to be dressed. Most people don't want a 40 pound ton, but I gotta tell you, that's a beautiful bird. Kaufman's turkeys range from 10 to 40 pounds, and he assures customers the birds are not overfed to make them more plump. That's how they grow. Very rarely change the ration that they're eating. If you take a look around me, you can see about 100 turkeys, but that's not even a fraction of what's sold at Kaufman's for Thanksgiving. They actually sell close to 40,000 each year. Everyone's saying family gatherings are going to be smaller. I really hate to think that that's true. I would like to think that people will gather together with their families like they have in the past. Kaufman says so far they've had a steady flow of customers. Everyone's got their own story and reason for coming out. Shauna Bennett and Sarah McAllister run Kaufman's store and say they think sales will be about the same as last year. Something to look forward to these days, so we think that Thanksgiving might be that thing for most families. Working for you and Waterman, Brittany Carlin, 23 News. The doctor said 
firefighting is out of the pictures. Daniel Persinger dreamed of being a firefighter his entire life. High school I was doing uh, explorer programs through New Milford and doing ride-alongs with Rockford Fire. But everything changed in July of 2012 when he was diagnosed with limb griddle muscular dystrophy, a disease that weakens your muscles. The diagnosis was really broke my heart. Persinger didn't let the disease stop him and now works as a chaplain for state line fire departments and with Illinois Firefighter Peer Support, an organization that runs a mental health hotline for first responders. We're a group of trained firefighters and we include EMS in that as well um, that are here to help other first responders. Over the first couple months of the pandemic, the organization didn't really see any more calls than normal. But in the last month, it's seen a 50% increase in its call volume. Now, all that stress is really starting to show itself. Executive Director Tom Howard says everyone who works for the group has previously worked with firefighters in some way. What we experience as first responders, the trauma that we experience and we're exposed to, causes us to feel isolated. And so by being there for one another, it reduces that isolation. It makes, let's say, it normalizes abnormal situations. Working for you in Rockford, Brittany Carlin, 23 News. I come down this morning to do my chores and the house was on smoke. The whole thing was in smoke. Kenneth Wolf and Joyce Jones' mother, Loretta Wolf, died Thursday morning after her Oregon home went up in flames. I saw heavy smoke coming from the front of the structure. We also got word that we had a victim inside. I was upset. I was at work um, when my sister called and told me that the house was on fire. And uh, yeah, I. It was hard, very hard. While Jones and Wolf grieve the loss of their mother, they're also picking up the pieces of their damaged childhood home and years of memories lost. She loved cards, that was her passion. I mean, we'd call her up and you'd, she'd say, well, I'm playing cards with Charlie. She'd make up a name for her other hand that she was playing with all the time. We'd all have a get together and have a cookout stuff like that, and that was going on once a month. Jones and Wolf say their mom is in a better place, but she will be missed by everyone who knew her. Everybody loved my mom, and everybody knew who she was. I mean, I, even the neighbor kids will call her Grandma Sue, even though that she's not, but they all loved her. Working for you in Oregon, Brittany Carlin, 23 News. Your residents will be safe. We, we've taken those steps to ensure that. Weekly COVID-19 tests at Walnut Acres and Freeport turned up an outbreak of positive cases among the facility's residents and staff, and they've forced administrators to pull out all the stops to keep everyone safe. PPE for the units that need to go onto the COVID area, full gown, N95, shoe covers, the whole nine yards. Walnut Acres Marketing and Admissions Director Ashley Eckert says only patients and staff in one unit were infected. And she's thankful the facility's safety procedures prevented the outbreak from being much worse. You know, we just try to stay positive and proactive and just try to keep the residents as comfortable as possible. During this outbreak, 50 residents will load these buses and be sent to two facilities, while 35 residents will stay here at Walnut Acres. Not all 35 residents have tested positive. They were just in the same unit where we got those positive results. My biggest role in this has been help coordinating the logistics of the transportation. Stevenson County Health Department Emergency Response Coordinator Bobby Barr praised Walnut Acres staff for being prepared and keeping residents and their family members calm during the transition. I think some residents are worried about not coming back and seeing the staff. Then they keep telling them it's not goodbye forever. We're just, you know, taking some time apart. Working for you in Freeport, Brittany Carlin, 23 News. I was really excited to see him join, so this is, it comes as a big shock. Winnebago County Republican Party Chairperson Eli Nicolosi helped Hintz with his campaign when Hintz first ran for coroner. He was recommended by Sue Fiducia, he had a stellar review, and uh, I was on the board when he, when he started as well. But that relationship changed in September, shortly after deputies arrested Hintz. Nicolosi released a statement calling for the coroner's resignation. Now, Hintz was indicted Wednesday on several charges of forgery, theft, and misconduct. It was very important for us as a party to come out ahead of this and say, you know, we're just not going to accept that kind of behavior. At the time, Hintz's attorney said his client would not step down. And on Tuesday, Hintz received nearly 50,000 votes. I think a lot of us traditionally will vote all Republican or all Democrat, 
So I think they just kind of check the names, not knowing. But I also think a lot of people don't know they can undervote. So yeah, it doesn't look good. If Hintz is proven guilty, the Winnebago County Board would pick another Republican to fill his seat. We're not taking any names yet. We're keeping that, you know, we're just letting this kind of this due action and just due course of law kind of take place. The legal process is just getting going. So this is a prolonged process that he, he would be going through logically. Uh, and so, no, it's not a good look for the county. It's not a good look for the community. Working for you in Winnebago County, Brittany Carlin, 23 News. Shannon, after talking with several people living in the two complexes, it seems most are on board with the idea of safety measures. Now, this plan adds 26 cameras to hopefully bring down the call volume in the area and enhance investigations within the apartments. Now, Caitlin Streff lives at a Great Oaks and thinks the cameras will calm her nerves while she's out walking with her dog. Somebody gets mad. My fear always can be, you know, not necessarily even for myself, but for my dog, because, you know, if somebody gets mad enough, who's to say they couldn't come out here and throw poisoned food or, or potentially, you know, try and get at meat and harm her. And 